In this screencast, we're going to use humidity charts to find physical property for an air-water vapor mixture. And we'll touch on the concepts of relative humidity, dew point, and wet bulb temperature. In our example, we have air that's at 40 degrees dry bulb and 30% relative humidity, and we're going to use the charts to find the dew point and wet bulb temperature. Both of these quantities are related to the moisture content, but mean different things and can cause confusion. If we say that the dry bulb temperature is 40 degrees, that's the temperature that we're used to thinking about that could be measured with a thermometer. This has nothing to do with the moisture content of the air. On the other hand, the relative humidity is a function of how much water is in the air, and we can get a sense of what the relative humidity represents if we look at how it's calculated. So we calculate the relative humidity by multiplying by 100 the partial pressure of water divided by the vapor pressure of water, which is a function of temperature. Partial pressure of water can be calculated by multiplying the mole fraction of water times the total system pressure. If we're using the humidity charts, the total system pressure is specified as an atmosphere. On the other hand, the mole fraction of water is related to the moisture content, which is on the y-axis. There's several different equations that we can use to calculate the vapor pressure as a function of temperature, such as the Antoine equation, but that's a little outside the scope of this screencast. For our purposes, it is sufficient to say that if we increase the temperature, then we're also going to increase the vapor pressure of water. This is a nonlinear relationship, but it helps us understand how things are changing as we move on the humidity chart. So first we'll tackle the dew point. We'll go straight to the humidity chart to find where we are and how we find the dew point. The dry bulb temperature is found on the x-axis on the chart. Here we know that the dry bulb temperature is 40. The relative humidity can be found on these sweeping curves that move across the humidity chart. And here we know that our relative humidity is 30%. So if we find the intersection of 40 degrees dry bulb temperature and 30% relative humidity, our air is at this point on the humidity chart. At this point, we want to know what the dew point is, which is the temperature at which liquid water will start to condense if we cool the temperature. Liquid water will only form at one place on this graph, and that's if the relative humidity is 100%. This is also called the saturation curve along the leftmost curve on this graph. We get to the dew point by moving horizontally on the humidity chart. If we're moving horizontally, the moisture content's not changing. So if the moisture content stays the same, then the mole fraction as well as the partial pressure of water is going to stay constant as well. So let's look at what is changing as we move to the dew point. If we're moving left, then we're obviously decreasing the dry bulb temperature. We said that the vapor pressure is a function of temperature, so the vapor pressure is also going to decrease as we decrease the temperature. If we're not changing vertically, in other words, if we're not changing the moisture content of air, then the partial pressure of water is staying the same. So if we keep the partial pressure of water the same while decreasing the vapor pressure, that means our relative humidity must go up. And that's what we see as we move left. We start at 30% relative humidity, here we're at 40% relative humidity, and here we're at 50. We will continue to increase the relative humidity until we hit 100% at the dew point. So continuing left all the way to the 100% saturation curve, we find the dew point at this curve. The temperature can be found along the saturation curve. So here's 20 degrees. We're a little bit less than that, so we're slightly over 19. We could also find the temperature if we dropped straight down to the x-axis. And here again, we can see that our temperature is slightly over 19. So in this case, our dew point is about 19 degrees. The dew point represents the point at which liquid will first start to form. If we continue to lower the temperature, we would move along the saturation curve. So if we're moving along the saturation curve while lowering the temperature, we're continuing to condense water. If we're moving down, we're also lowering the moisture content as that water condenses. Now that we know the dew point, we want to find the wet bulb temperature. And it's helpful to look at how this can be measured to understand this concept. Here a wet bulb differs from a dry bulb in that it's surrounded by a wick that's saturated with water. And if we blow air at 40 degrees and a relative humidity of 30% past that bulb surrounded by water, it's going to cause some of the water to evaporate. As water evaporates, heat is lost from the wet bulb. So heat's being transferred from the wet bulb to the water as it evaporates, and that has an effect of cooling the wet bulb. 
So the temperature of the wet bulb is driven down due to water evaporation. How far the wet bulb temperature drops is a function of the moisture content of the air. We can think of a limiting case to illustrate this point. For example, let's consider the case that the relative humidity is 100%. If we're moving air past the wet bulb that's completely saturated with water, then water can't evaporate from the wet bulb. If there's no evaporation, there's no heat loss from the wet bulb. Consequently, the wet bulb temperature won't change. So if the relative humidity is 100%, then the wet bulb temperature is equal to the dry bulb temperature. There will never be a situation where the wet bulb temperature is greater than the dry bulb temperature. How much the wet bulb temperature is lower than the dry bulb is a function of the moisture content. So in our case of 30% relative humidity, we can look to the humidity charts to find the wet bulb temp. The point on the chart where our air is 40 degrees C and 30% relative humidity is shown again, and we can find the wet bulb temperature by moving from this point along lines of constant wet bulb temperature, which are the diagonal lines that move across the chart. And we find the wet bulb temperature along the saturation curve along this line. So here we're about 25 degrees. The wet bulb temperature is substantially lower than 40 due to the relatively low moisture content at a relative humidity of 30%. To illustrate how this changes as a function of the moisture content, let's look at the example where we're at 40 degrees and 50% relative humidity. I've shown that part with the blue circle here, and we find the wet bulb temperature at this point the same way by moving along a different line of constant wet bulb temperature. So moving diagonal and up and left to the curve, we can see that the wet bulb temperature is something greater than 30 degrees, between 30 and 31. As we would expect, as we increase the relative humidity, that's going to increase the wet bulb temperature. If we continue to increase the relative humidity from here, as we approach 100%, then we know that the wet bulb temperature is going to approach the dry bulb temperature of 40.